So I wanted to make a video about the HP 35S scientific calculator. Uh, the 35S was first released in 2007 to coincide with the 35th anniversary of the release of the world's first scientific calculator, the HP 35. And I don't have a 35, but this is the 45 uh, from the early 1970s. And you can see they do share many of the same design features. Uh, such as a black uh, shell and boxy rectangular outline uh, with subtly um, curving sides. Uh, the 35S also has uh, the beveled or chamfered keys common in HP's older calculators and uh, yeah, they're really quite satisfying to press. Uh, so design-wise the 35S looks and feels very much like a classic Hewlett-Packard calculator and was quite a departure from its predecessor, the 33S, uh, which had a chevron-style keyboard. And that's certainly considered by many people to be a vast improvement uh, from an aesthetic point of view. Uh, and it's also kind of important to understand that the 35S is also a standalone device, uh, so it doesn't support any communication abilities uh, such as uh, USB, uh, and that actually makes it acceptable for uh, some professional examinations where more powerful calculators would not be allowed. Uh, so for example, in the US, um, it's the most powerful programmable calculator approved for the uh, fundamentals of engineering and uh, PE exams. And it's also approved for many uh, surveying uh, exams globally. So physically, as I mentioned, the HP 35 clearly pays design homage to the original HP 35. Uh, it has a metal front plate and a two-line alphanumeric LCD display. And overall, it's quite an attractive and solidly built calculator. Uh, it uses uh, two coin cell batteries. Uh, and when these are running low, it's important to swap them out one by one. Um, otherwise, programs and variables in persistent storage will be lost. Uh, and the HP 35S is not particularly compact, uh, so it's slightly larger than, uh, say, a Pioneer series calculator, uh, but it's only 125 grams, so it's considerably lighter than some of HP's older models. So the basic operation of the 35S is, of course, reverse polish notation, or RPN. Uh, so to calculate 2 plus 3 times 4, uh, you type those numbers onto the stack uh, and then hit multiply and, and plus to get your answer. Uh, and the calculator has all the usual operations you'd expect, uh, such as trigonometric uh, powers, roots and logarithms. And it works in fixed scientific or engineering notation and supports numbers in binary, decimal or hexadecimal. Uh, it also allows storage of values into 26 registers. Um, so, for example, I can store the number 14 uh, into the A register and then uh, I'll recall that back. So, the HP 35S has support for complex numbers, vectors, and fractions. And complex numbers are entered using the I key. Uh, and they're displayed on a single line, which is nice, um, and then they obviously support uh, arithmetic. Uh, there are a few quirks of complex numbers. Uh, so for example, if I try to find the square root of negative 1, uh, that's not supported. Um, and even if I enter that in uh, as a complex, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, the only way to get the right answer is to raise uh, negative 1 uh, to the power of uh, 0.5. So vectors are entered uh, using square brackets uh, and comma keys, uh, which is a little, a little bit awkward. Uh, but again, uh, they're displayed on one line, which is nice, um, and you can uh, they can be added and subtracted, um, and you can multiply or divide them uh, by a scalar. Uh, and you can also multiply two vectors together uh, to yield the dot product. Uh, there's no cross product function. And fractions are, are also supported. Uh, so say to enter uh, 5 and 6 sevenths, I'd 
uh, type in 5.6.7 uh, and I can switch between uh, fractional view uh, and, and decimal view uh, at any point uh, which is nice uh, so uh, I can do uh, arithmetic uh, with fractions and the results are simplified um, which again is quite nice and I think this uh, fraction feature which was introduced in the HP 32S2 uh, is really quite uh, useful in, um, in many situations. And like its immediate predecessors, the 33S and the 32S2, 35S has an equation mode uh, where equations uh, and formulae can be entered in algebraic syntax. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to calculate the distance an object falls uh, under gravity, uh, I can just type um, the, this equation uh, in, so uh, distance is half times g um, times time uh, squared. And once I've got my formula, I just can hit uh, enter to evaluate it. Uh, so I can enter a, a, a time in, in seconds, uh, and then uh, I will see um, the distance result. Uh, and I can also um, solve um, for a uh, variable. Uh, so for example, if I want to know the time uh, that it takes for an object to fall 100 meters, uh, I can hit, hit solve uh, and I'd, I'd enter uh, t uh, and so the, the distance is 100 uh, and it would take uh, 4.5 seconds uh, for an object to fall that far. And the equation solver is a really great feature, uh, but it is somewhat limited uh, by its support for only single uh, letter uh, variables. And the 35S also supports keystroke programming to extend the functionality of the calculator. And like with the 33S and 32S2, uh, you can link equations uh, to keystroke programs, uh, which is quite powerful. Uh, so for example, uh, this, this program actually creates a loop around uh, the formula uh, we just entered before. Um, so it starts by creating a label A for the program, uh, it stores the X register into H, which is uh, a height, uh, and starts off with a time of zero and stores that in T, uh, and then calculates the distance that and the object uh, fall within uh, T seconds. Uh, and subtracts that from the original height. Uh, and if that is uh, less than zero, uh, then we um, fall through the fall through the conditional. Uh, and the PSE instruction uh, actually uh, prints out uh, the height after that number of seconds. Uh, and then it uh, increments t and loops back to the start of the program. Uh, and otherwise, um, if the, uh, the height is now negative, uh, we just print out zero uh, and, and return. Uh, so for example, uh, if I hit, uh, say, into 100 uh, as my height, uh, I can run my program, uh, which is stored in, in A, uh, and it will um, loop through and show me um, the height of the object um, after uh, each second until it gets to zero. So overall, the 35S is quite a decent scientific calculator, but it's certainly not perfect. Uh, its retro design uh, looks great, and it's really pleasant to use. Um, the equation solver is also uh, pretty powerful, uh, especially the way it links with keystroke programming. Uh, and its support for fractions um, can be quite handy, but it does have some significant limitations. So there's no support for matrices um, or complex linear systems. Uh, its vector support is um, pretty minimal, and it does have some odd uh, key placement. Uh, and of course, uh, no USB input um, or way of get to get programs um, on or off the calculator is a real uh, significant limitation. Uh, but one of the interesting things about HP scientific calculators is that 
Um, they've all got their pros and cons. So uh, there, there are those who will prefer uh, the HP 42S uh, or the 32S2 or even the 48G graphing calculator or 40, uh, 50G. Uh, but the 35S um, does have some advantages over all of those. Uh, and, you know, the 35S has been artificially limited to um, make it approved for exam situations, uh, which in some ways is sad. Um, they could easily have been a lot more powerful. Uh, and I hope at some point HP or someone in the homebrew community like Swiss Micros uh, might update the design and uh, make it more useful for a professional user. Uh, but overall, I enjoy using this calculator, and I think it does earn its place in the history of HP's scientific calculators. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful.